Today's scripture comes from Luke 18, verse 8. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? May the Lord bless the reading of his word. <laughs> Praise God. You know, um, <clears throat> last week, uh, Pastor talked to, uh, about Hebrews chapter 11, and then we'll call that traditionally the, the, the faith chapter. You know, uh, all the greats of the Bible, not all of them, but quite a few of the greats of the Bible and the things that they were accomplished or able to accomplish by their faith. You know, and uh, oftentimes, you know, it's just something that, 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 you know, you realize because some people, you know, they tend to think, well, God gives uh, certain people more faith than others. Is that true? Does the Bible say he gives to everyone a measure of faith? So does, does God give, uh, does, would God give Brother Scott you know, 100% faith, and then poor, poor, you know, Sister Keisha over here, he's only going to give her, you know, 50% faith. God's not a respecter of persons, is he? But he does give us a measure of the faith. You know, but we're, not, we're talking about a faith, though, that goes beyond today. A faith that goes beyond God's, your, our ability to believe that God has forgiven us of past sins. We want to talk about saving faith today. You know, saving faith is that faith that endures to the end. It goes through the good times as well as through the bad times. You know, a lot of folks, they, they tend to uh, lose their faith. I, I, I had a conversation with a lady that uh, explained to me that she no longer could believe in God. And her reason for that was that uh, she knew a family that had a two-year-old child that uh, succumbed to cancer. And apparently it was a type of cancer that was... Uh, Painful. I don't know if all cancers are painful or not. My dad had prostate cancer, and you wouldn't know it by the way he kept walking and doing everything that he had done. In fact, he didn't even know he had it until he went to the doctor, and then when he went to the doctor and he had the treatment for it, no effects, no sickness, no anything. It was like same old dad that I've always known and loved. He did no effects whatsoever, but now, thank God, he's totally cancer-free. But this child succumbed to this cancer and because this child succumbed to the cancer and watching the child do that and the, the parents of this child, the anguish and the suffering that they, they also endured, um, this lady said that she just could not believe in God and most certainly not a loving God because if there was a God, there would not, he would not let something like this happen. You know, I listened to her and, and she seemed to... Um, you know, she stated her case. You know, the Bible says the person that states their case first seems right until examined by their neighbor. <laughs> That's in Proverbs chapter 18, verse, uh, verse 17. It, you know, chapter 18, verse 17. It, it seems maybe worded a little differently in some of her Bibles, but it, just, it makes sense, doesn't it? You know, if you come to me with your, with your case and you state your case, you know, well, you know, and you do it eloquently, it's, you know what, that sounds, that sounds right. That sounds, you know, like, yeah, that makes sense to me. Until someone else comes and examines it and says, but wait a minute. Let's, let's, let's look at this thing a little bit more closely. And that's what we have even between evolution and, and creation, isn't it? You know, it seems that the person who states their case first seems, to, uh, seems right until examined. You know, there are people now in, in our school systems that are being taught this, this evolution. That's all they're being taught. They're not being taught at home that God created the world in, in six days. So, so the first case that they're hearing is that all of this stuff came by what? By chance, by chance, you know, and, and, and that seems right to them. You know, the Bible says there's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are what? The ways of death. Seems right, seems right. Sounds like, you know, you know I've seen the pictures in the books, and the, I've seen the, oh, the, the Neanderthal, the, the, the Java man, the, the, the uh, uh, pelt, pelt down man, you know, that, that one there, the pelt down man. You ever heard of that one before? You've heard of the Pelt Down Man? You ever heard of Charles Dawson? Charles Dawson? Michael, you've heard of Charles Dawson, haven't you? You know, the Pelt Down Man with this, 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 uh, this skull and the jawbone that they supposedly had found in, uh, in uh, Sussex, England. Am I talking French here? You've ever heard of the Pelt Down Man? It was a 40-year hoax is what it was. You know, they took the jawbone uh, of, a, of, a, of a orangutan and they put it with the skull 
of a, of a modern human and say, well, here's the missing link. Charles Dawson, Google him. You know, and for 40 years, the scientific community was fooled into believing, you know, this was the missing link. We've got proof that evolution is truth. It's true. It turned out to be a long hoax, big old hoax, you know. And, and, and when you look at the science books that they have in school, the biology books and stuff, they still have stuff in those books that have been debunked and proven not to be true a long time ago. But they're still in the textbooks, and they're still being taught to some of our children. And unfortunately, now, when you go to Christian school, some of that stuff is being taught to some of our children. You know? But either way, you know, it's all on faith. It's all on faith. Whether you believe that God created this world in six days and rested the seventh day. You know, was any of you there? Now, I know some of you are somewhat a little older than me. Brother Bob, I know, you know you're a little bit older than me, but you weren't there, were you? You weren't there at creation. No, none of us were there at creation. Is there anyone here that knows anyone who was there at creation? What? No hands go up? Was the Holy Ghost there? Was Jesus there? Was the Father there? Do you do know him, right? So you do know someone that was there at creation. You have a, we have an account of it right here. You know, but none of us was there. So we take that by what? By faith. By faith. Now, the evolutionists, they would like you to believe that, that their uh, uh, belief, their system, is all founded on scientific evidence. But when we're talking about you know, uh, uh, origin science, not operational science, it's all on faith. It's all on faith. Yesterday, I was walking uh, out of the, the uh, motor vehicle. And as I was walking out of the motor vehicle, you know, this lady was in this van, and she, she you know, I was walking, and, you know, she was backing up. And something just told me, don't, don't keep walking, because she doesn't see you. And she's about to run over you if you do that. So, you know, I just stopped. You know, and then she stopped, you know, and she, she, she lowered her window, <laughs> and she said, Woman driver, no survivors. <laughs> you know, that's what she said. You know, and I said, well, you know, I didn't say that. Now, I wouldn't be caught dead saying that, not, not, not in public, maybe. <laughs> you know, but, uh, you know, I didn't have faith that this woman saw me and that she was going to stop. You know, uh, you know, everything operates in this world on faith, on faith. You know, when you, when you, I was coming to church this morning and a car, um, had its turn signal on, you know, and a turn signal is really a, an electronic uh, word to the person around them, right? I intend to turn here. You know, there's been accidents because people have put their turn signal on too late or they put it on too soon. You know, they may be intending to turn right, not where you're about to turn left in front of them, but the next right turn, right? So you may, you know, you may think, well, okay, I see you putting your turn signal on. I see you slowing down. You're about to make a turn right here where I am so I can safely make my left turn. But guess what they do? They keep going straight, right? And what happens? You get what they call T-boned, right? That happens all the time. It happens all the time. But we operate on faith. When you go to restaurants to eat, uh, now listen, you have faith in the people that are cooking your food. Do, do, do you not? You don't know the person back there cooking, their, cooking your food. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. Maybe you, you, since if you did, you wouldn't go there to eat, maybe. You know, but for, for the most part, when you walk into that establishment, you are going in there on what? On faith. On faith that you are going to be able to go in there, order a meal, sit down, and be fed something nourishing that is not going to cause you any ill effects, right? You do that every time you pull up to... to you know, uh, the fast food restaurants, you know, everything operates on faith, on faith, you know. So, so now we're, we're talking about a faith, though. Uh, what is faith? Now, when we, you look in the Bible, it says faith is the substance of things what? The evidence of things not seen, and okay? So, so, so the Christian, you know, now, now is faith, is that a secular word or is that a religious word? That's a rhetorical question. It's a religious word, is it not? It's a religious word for the most part, for the most part. Although faith comes into play in everything that we do. Again, absolutely. You know, like I said, when you go into a restaurant, you have faith that the cook did not drop kick that steak across the floor. Oops. <laughs> Pick it up. <laughs> Blow it off. Put it right on the grill. You'll never know. Just call it seasoning. <laughs> you know, you have faith. 
You know, you have faith. We all have faith. You have faith. Now, listen, as of late, there have been those who, who work for the government. You know, <laughs> you, know you, 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 you worried about whether that check is going to make it into that direct deposit. You know, because all up until then, up until this, this, this thing here, you've had faith. That check has come repeatedly. You've not worried about that. You've cashed checks on it. You've used that plastic based on faith that I'm going to get paid, right? We all operate on faith, you know. And, and listen, I, I, don't, don't be intimidated. Please don't be intimidated by those people that call themselves scientists. There are some true scientists that will tell you, listen, you know what? What we claim to have happened could not have possibly happened. Yet that's what happened, you know. They would have you to believe in their God called chance. Not your grandson, Carol Yarmel. You know, their, their God is called chance. That's her grandson's name. You know, that, that all of this, the first that they'll say it, there was, there was absolutely nothing. There was nothing. And then there was this boom explosion from nothing. And then all these gases, you know, coagulated and, you know, came together and everything, all the planets, all this came from chance. Now, we, on the other hand, at least we're honest, we say, listen, we believe the record, the biblical record, that this came from God. He said it. He said it. And he tells us how he did it. You know, what's all the debate? You know, God said, let there be light, and there was what? You know, God said, let the firmament be divided. How did he do this? Psalms 33, what does it tell us? How did he do it? How did God bring all this into existence? Hebrews tells us, we know that the things we see, you know, were not made from what we see, right? Is that Hebrews? He just tells us that, let's look at it anyway, because you're looking at me kind of funny. That's okay. Maybe I just look funny. I don't know. <laughs> uh, Psalms chapter 33. 33, you know I like the readers. Let's see here. 33, let's start in uh, verse 6. You got it? Say hallelujah. hallelujah. I knew I'd get a hallelujah at you, 70 Adventists. Somehow. Hallelujah, right? Okay, Psalms 33, verse 6. Who wants to read it? I see two hands. Go ahead. Read it loudly. Does that explain how he did it? Look at verse 9. What does verse 9 say, Tom? No, no, 33, verse 9. Does that explain how God did all this? Let's go, to, let's go to Isaiah. Let's just go to Isaiah and get a little bit more of an understanding. Isaiah 54, is it? Or is it 55? We'll find out. Let's see, maybe 55, let's see. Isaiah 55, had a senior moment there. Verse 9, For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and make it bring, maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater, so shall my what? My word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I send it. So that explains how he did it. God has creative energy, right? When he speaks, when he speaks, when words proceed from his mouth, and I just think, you know, I, I, it just could be me. I don't even think God has to speak. You know, not my God. I think he could just think it, you know. And he may be able to do something beyond that. I, I don't know. I think when Jesus was on the cross, he could have just thought, I am and you were. And, and, and this world would have ceased to exist. You know, I know for a fact if he would have said, I am and you were, that would have been it. I know for a fact when he stood in, in front of Lazarus' tombs and said, Lazarus, come forth. I know for a fact that that voice pierced the ears of that dead man and he came forth. It was the word that was spoken. Isn't that right? It was the same word that was spoken in the very beginning. God said, let there be light. And it was light. He didn't have to come down from heaven. He didn't have to travel all this distance and bring some light or do. He just said, let there be light. And there was light. 
You see, so the word of God is, it is powerful. Like, he, like Paul said, it's powerful. The word of God carries in itself the ability to create what it goes out to do. God says, my word, if I speak it, it's not going to come back to me unless it accomplishes what I sent it out to do. Huh? This is beautiful. Because when God says, you are my daughter, how long does it take? Is this word just as effective today as it was when he spoke this word into existence? Are the heavens still in, in place? Is everything that God spoke into existence in the first place, is it still operational today? So when God speaks and he says, Michael Pestis, you are my son, how long does it take? You're his son. That's why God can't lie. Isn't that right? It's impossible. The Bible says it's impossible for God to lie. And people say, well, wait a minute. What do you, what do you mean? Nothing, nothing too impossible for God. It is impossible for God to lie. Literally, it is impossible for him to lie. Because if he says it, it is going to happen. It's going to happen. Just like he did in the very beginning. When he speaks, it will happen. That's the God we serve. But see, now many of us have a, have a, have a, a faith that really is nothing more than a mental assent to a historical fact or so. We believe that Jesus was a, a historical figure. We may believe that Jesus was the Son of God. We have a mental assent to that, but we don't go beyond that. We still are operating on that faith that, that God will forgive you of your sins. See, because we had an egocentric motive from that. You know, we, we all wanted to be forgiven of our sins, so we, 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 we can muster up enough belief that God has forgiven me of my sins. But what about that saving faith that will carry you through to the end? You know, we talked about last time about the time of trouble that's coming, Jacob's time of trouble, the time that's going to happen that, that, that uh, the seven last plays. We got a bunch of stuff. We talked about that, right? And the, and, and the only way we're going to get through that is to have that saving faith, that faith that goes beyond a simple mental ascent. You see? You know, we, we, and that has to be developed. It has to be developed. You know, I, I want to see, you know, use this as a definition, you know, because... Like I said, we know what the, what the definition usually given is, that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things that are not seen. We, you know, for instance, the evolutionists wasn't there when they said this being Big Bang took place, right? They weren't there, so they have to believe that based on what? Now, some of them are honest enough to say that. Some of them will say, no, we have evidence. No, 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 no. You were not there. It is the evidence of things not seen. You weren't there, so you are by faith believing that's what happened. The Christian is by faith believing God said it, and it was so. It stood fast. It's both by faith. It's both by faith. But see, they like to try to intimidate you to make you feel like you're not very intelligent. See, they, you know, persecution, you know, uh, a ridicule. Ridicule is a very, very persuasive form of persecution. You ask the kids on the playground. You know, you can make fun of somebody. You know, there's always somebody, you know, I always seem to have know these guys, you know, they could cut you down so fast like this. And they usually wait till they got an audience, you know. And then they start making, what we used to in the day say, they start cracking on you. They start talking about your clothes or your shoes or whatever. Did your mama get them clothes from Kmart and whatnot? And before you know it, you're getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And all the other kids are standing around and they laughing and they having a real good time at your expense, you know. Ridicule is a powerful, powerful form of persecution. And it affects us too. Because see, when people start saying, oh, you actually believe, you literally believe that, that in six days, six literal days, 24-hour periods, God was able to bring all this into existence. You really believe that. And they want to try to, try to intimidate you by ridiculing your belief. God said, don't be afraid of their faces. But see, we need to understand and we need to know from an intelligent place why we believe what we believe. Because the time is coming when you are going to be brought singly to give an answer. And some of us are going to find out, well, I thought I, I, thought I believed that. You know, the Bible says that the devil believes and does what? Trembles. A lot of folks think that faith is nothing more than trust. Have you heard that before? What is faith? Faith is trust. Faith is trusting in God. Now, true enough, you know, trust is an element of faith. True enough. But it is not the whole of it. You trust your insurance company, don't you? Until they tell you that, that, that you were not covered. <laughs> and they seem to tell you that all the time. I don't care what your policy says. You know, they find a way to say, I'm afraid your policy doesn't cover this. You know? 
So, so trust is, is, is a part of faith, but it's not the whole of it. We want to look into the Bible and the Bible only to see, you know, what is faith? And I say the best place to go, who, if you really wanted to know what faith was, who's the best person to ask? I heard a little faint something. Or somebody speaking in tongues or something. What was that? Who? Jesus. That's right. Jesus. I start to look and see if I was in the Adventist church or not. Let's go to Matthew chapter 8. Because we want to get this thing. See, listen. You know what? The Bible says without faith, it is, it is impossible to do what? To please God. And we know, for instance, that, that, that Enoch was a man of faith, right? Because it says Enoch walked with, walked with God. He pleased God, right? And God took him. You know, and the Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please him. So we know that Enoch pleased God, right? So he was a man of faith. That makes sense, doesn't it? Huh? Oh, yeah. All right, let's go to Matthew chapter 8. And we want to get an understanding of this, this saving faith, this faith that goes beyond just that mental ascent, right? Matthew chapter 8. There's a story about a centurion. Remember this? Let's start in verse 1. Uh, when he was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou uh, wilt, thou can make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thy clean. And immediately, you know, that, 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 I like that, immediately. That's just like at the beginning when God said, let there be light, it was, it was immediately, you know? Immediately the leprosy was cleansed. And Jesus saith unto him, see thou tell no man, but go thy way, show thyself to the priest, and offer the gift that Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him. What did he say to him? And saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus saith unto him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, uh, said Lord, I'm not worthy that thou should, should have come under my roof, but do what? Speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man of, under authority, having soldiers under me, and I say to this man, go, and he goeth, and to another, come, and he cometh, and to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great what? Not in Israel. Wow. Is that a definition of faith? Is this a definition? Jesus said, I have not found such great faith. Not in all of Israel. So, so that if we unpack this thing, what do we see here? We see a man coming to Jesus. He wants Jesus to do something for him, right? And Jesus said, okay, let's go. And he said, no, 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 that's okay. That's okay. You don't, I'm not even worthy for you to come into my house. All you need to do for me is just speak the word. Just say it. That's good with me. Just say it. He expected the word of God and the word of God only to do what? The word was spoken to do. Isn't that the same thing Isaiah just said? You know, my word will not return unto me void. It will accomplish the thing which I send it out to. So what do we have here? We've got a man and wasn't a Jew, by the way. Both of the, the uh, examples of Jesus uh, pointing out what was great faith were, neither, were not from any of the Jews. One was from a woman in Matthew 15, right? And the other one was from another Gentile in, in this chapter here. And Jesus said, ah, I wonder what would have happened if he came into a Seventh-day Adventist church today, you know, or, or any of our churches, I'd wonder. I just wonder. But this man expected the word of God to accomplish the very thing that it was spoken to do. Now, let me ask you something. You know, the Bible talks about something called the prayer of faith. You're familiar with that, right? James chapter 5, verse 15. Hmm? You know, let, in the prayer of faith, if there be any sick among you, remember that, right? The prayer of what? Faith. Right? We'll raise them up. Okay? See if, you can, if, we, if we stay together on this. This man came to Jesus. He wanted something from Jesus. And, and, and Jesus said, I'll come with you. And he said, no, that's not necessary. Just speak the word. Sounds like he had been reading Isaiah, huh? 
Jesus said, well, you just do the same thing now that you did, you know, in Isaiah and what you did at the beginning. Just speak the word. Just say it. Now, when you pray, do you pray the prayer of faith? Do you really? Do you pray expecting the word of God and the word of God only to accomplish what is being spoken or what's being asked for? Do you really expect that? That, that when you remind God of what he has said to you in his word, that he will fulfill his word? David did. You look at, at, at uh, second, second Samuel, was it? chapter 7. David simply was reminding God of what he had already said. You know, will God answer a prayer that, that he's already you know, spoken in his word? You know, God loves to be reminded of his word, by the way. You know, and he has spoken these words. This book is for us. Whatsoever was written, was written for our learning. You know, for us, it's for us. So when you go to, to God in prayer, the prayer of faith, and you are simply praying and asking God to do what his word has already said, will he do it? Well, some of us think, well, you know, I've seen people even say, you know, sister, would you pray for me? Would you just pray for me? Because somehow, you know, when I, when I, when I pray, God just don't, he don't listen to me. My prayer is, is boom, boom. <laughs> he don't listen to me. You know, but you, you know, you seem to have the inside track with God. So, so, so uh, would you pray for me, please? Make God a respecter of persons. That's right. That's right. You know, and if the person that doubts, he, he, the Bible says you, don't, you shouldn't expect to receive what? Anything from God. Are you, we really praying the prayer of faith? Do we expect God's word to accomplish what his word is sent out to do? Or do we just like, you know, you know uh, I learned this in cooking class. You know, Sister uh, Mrs. Martinez here, she's still here. I don't know if anybody here went to Buena back in the day. You know, but I learned, you know, to test spaghetti. You, you cook it, then you take a strand out, and you throw it against the refrigerator. You ever, anybody do, do that? And if it sticks, you know, you know nobody done that? <laughs> Try it. You, you, you're shaking your head, huh? Yeah, you know, if it sticks, you know, and if, you know, but anyhow, you know what? You know, that's how some of us pray. We just throw something out there. <laughs> we just throw it out there. Oh, Lord, I, you know, Lord, I, the rent is due, and I, and I don't have the money. I'm just going to throw this out there and see maybe, just maybe, God might just have a lottery ticket blow across my path. <laughs> now, I'm not really sure that he's going to do anything for me, but I'll just throw it out there. You know, what kind of parent would you, know, what kind of parent would you be? You know, if, if that's the kind of trust your children had in you. Well, you know, uh, I'm hungry. I'm starving like Marvin. I would like to have something to eat. And I'm just, just going to throw it out there and see maybe if my parents will feed me tonight. You know, it's a chance. It's a 50-50 chance. They might give me something to eat. They may not. You feed your children, don't you? And, and if we know how to give good gifts to our own children, being evil, does God do, you know, he says, my ways are not like your ways. I, I, my ways are higher than your ways. Much higher. Let's look at the woman. Let's, let's, you know, do you understand what I'm trying to say here? This type of faith goes beyond just that, that, that mental assent that says, you know, I, yeah, I believe that God um, forgave me of my sins. And we, we stop there. We stop right there. And then from there, for the rest of the, you know, God has forgiven me of my sins. Now it's up to me, you know, that I'm on, on the right path with him to take care of all this stuff and handle it myself from now on in. Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. We are to grow from faith to faith. You know, but how do we get, how, you know what, Let, let's look at something real quick before we go to, let's look at Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17, I think it's in verse 5, huh? Let's see. Oh, yeah. It, Jesus is talking about this, this, this situation, and then in verse 5 he says, And the apostles said unto him, Lord, do what? What, is, what, what were they asking him, Jesus to do? Increase our faith. Increase our faith. Lord, increase our faith. Is that a prayer that any of us have ever prayed? You know, huh? Has, is, is there anybody here in this, in this sanctuary that often have found themselves kind of, you know, Jesus oftentimes said, Robert, you know, as he's walking with the disciples, O oh, ye of what? Little faith. Oh, ye of little faith. You know, sometimes it seemed like he got annoyed with them a little bit too, didn't he? How long, you know, O oh, ye of little faith. Would he say anything differently about us? Huh? 
You know, that's interesting. But they came to Jesus and they wanted something from him. They said, Lord, increase our faith. So how does that happen? How does your faith, how does your faith get increased? How does my faith get increased? Huh? By praying? That's a good thing. Let's just stay, let's, let's look, let's look at chapter 10 of Romans. See if this will answer the question. Romans chapter 10. Some of you know where I'm going. Romans chapter 10. Verse what? Ah, yeah. I told you somebody knew where I was going. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. So then faith cometh by what? And hearing by the? Ah. So, Lord, increase my what? My faith. Right? That's what they asked him. Lord, increase our faith. And then the word says, faith cometh by what? Hearing and hearing what? Hearing, hearing the, uh, the latest uh, top 40 song on the radio? <coughs> faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of what? The word of God. The word of God, right? So if you want more faith, if you're asking God to increase your faith, then you need to be doing more what? You need to be in the word more, isn't that right? Does that make sense? Because faith cometh by hearing and hearing what? The word of God. See? So if we want our faith to be increased, you know what? Can we say it this way? No word, no what? No faith. Isn't that right? Does that make sense? If we're not in the word of God, are we gonna, is our faith going to be increased? Can we expect it to be increased? Because faith cometh by in hearing the word. Does that make sense to anybody? Or is it just me? Okay, well, just you know, wonder. I, I like to ask because see, you know. So if we're if, listen, so if we're not if we're not in the Word of God, if we're too busy, if we're if we're running around and we're doing everything, living or pertaining to life, but we don't make time to get into the Word of God, you know what? Something that I found. Some of those very same people that don't make time for the Word of God are some of the very ones that say, "Well, I, I hope so. I'm not sure. I hope I'll make it." You know, remember this, we, we're, we're saved by grace through, huh? We're saved by grace through faith. So if, we, if, if our faith is, is fledgling, how secure are we going to be in our salvation? Because faith cometh by and hearing the, the word. So if you want your faith increased, where do we need to go? To the, that's living and written, that's living and written, because in the beginning was the, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So the living, living, and, living and written word. Where does it say that at? That's right, where does it say that at? No, no, the question is, where does it say what you just said? Where, you know, it's in the, it's in the word, right? Jeremiah? Chapter 32, 33, is it? 17 and, 20, and 17 and 27? Ah, Lord God, you are the God of all flesh. There is nothing, that's what you just said, right? There is nothing too hard for you. Where is that at? It's in the Word. And faith cometh by hearing and hearing the Word. So you didn't just make that up. That just didn't pop into your head. That is founded upon the Word. We walk by and not by? Huh? So do you see that, that in order for us to make it through that time we talked about last, the last time I was before you, we need to have our faith, what? Increased. Because some of us, I'll tell you quite frankly, some of us are, you know, we, we, we would be the first ones to admit, you know, I'm, I'm just not, I, I don't feel comfortable in my faith. I really don't. I just don't feel comfortable in my faith. Now, some of us feel that way and won't admit it, you know. We're very, very good at disguising things. But what, where is your faith at today? Do you expect when you pray, when you talk to God, do you pray the prayer of faith? You know, Paul talks about fighting, doesn't he, sometimes? He says, fight the good fight of what? Faith. Huh? First Timothy chapter 6, right? Verse 12. Fight the good fight of faith. And if our faith is, is here, what kind of fight is it going to be? You going to get hit? It's going to be a one-hit fight. You'll get hit, and then, or maybe two. You get hit, and then you hit the floor. <laughs> right? 
fight the good fight of faith, we must have it, right? And this is that faith that goes beyond the devil believes and trembles. You know the word in Greek, you know, this is in Strong's, Strong's what, 4,100. Four, 4, you know, the word is pistis. You know, memory by association. Pestis, pistis, that word for faith. And then the word for belief that it comes is pistuo, 41002, Strong's. It comes from the same word, you know. Do you know something? I was playing with my computer, and I, I, you know, I typed in faith in Jesus. I, I got the, new, the King James Version. How many times do you think that came up in the King James Version? I'm not, I don't know whatever version you have. Do you believe that that, that, that that phrase, faith in Jesus, unless this thing is, is messed up, didn't come up one time? Huh? Didn't come up one time. Faith in Jesus did not come up one time. But you know what did come up? You're smiling. You know what it is. Faith of Jesus. The faith of Jesus. That same faith that he possessed. You, have, you must have the faith of Jesus. Not just the faith in Jesus, but the faith of Jesus. Do you believe me? First place is found in Romans chapter 3, verse 22. Huh? Let's see. First place, Romans chapter 3, verse 22. The second place, Galatians chapter 2, verse 16. And the third place, it's another 22. See, this is how you remember, remember stuff. 22. The other one is in, in um, Revelations chapter 14, verse 12. Look it up. Here are they that, that have the, here's the patience of Jesus. They have the, what? The faith of Jesus. Righteousness by the faith of Jesus. Look it up. It doesn't say faith in Jesus. It's the faith of Jesus. That's good stuff. Because I know what his faith was like. I know that he had the real stuff, you know. Me, not so much sometimes. And the Bible says that God has given every man, Romans chapter 12, verse 3, a measure of what? Faith. Which faith is it? The faith of Jesus? God has given to us. Now, we are to grow. Our faith is to grow. It's to grow beyond just believing that God will forgive me of my sins. It's, it's, it's that faith that goes from, from day to day, from moment to moment. And, and what is that faith? What did Jesus say was great faith? This man expected the word of God and the word of God only. Not the word of God in me, but the word and the word of God only to accomplish what it was spoken to do. This kind of was an epiphany to me, me years ago when I started looking at this. I said, God spoke and it stood fast. And these folks are still talking about, you know, there's just no way that God could have done this in six days. I said, God could have done it in six nanoseconds if he had chose to. He didn't stutter. A day is not a literal year where God said, let, 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 let there be, no. God said, let there be light. That's important for us to really understand and to grasp because, see, that same word that spoke then is the word that operates in your life. When God says to you, Robert, you're my son. You're my son. It doesn't take no eons and eons and years and light years for that to happen. The word is in your mouth. Oftentimes, Jesus went to a town and he, saw, he, saw, he said like he, couldn't, he couldn't do hardly anything in that town at all because they didn't have any what? Faith. And oftentimes the Bible says when Jesus, seeing their faith, was able to do what, what he wanted to do. So, so if we don't have that faith, that saving faith, that faith that says, Lord, I... See, this whole thing started between, behind... You know, when, when, when the serpent spoke to Adam and Eve in the garden, they literally believed the serpent as opposed to God. They exercised the faith. See, faith is only as good as the object to which it is bestowed upon, Right? See, if you have faith that I'm going to get you all a Lamborghini, <laughs> it ain't going to happen. <laughs> you, that, that, that faith ain't, is not going to materialize. But if you have faith that God will do what he said he will do because it's impossible for him to lie, oh boy, you're in a good place. You're in a good place. But unfortunately, many of us are not there. We, we really are not there. We don't really expect the word to do exactly what the word says. We just throw that spaghetti against the refrigerator. See if it sticks. You know, some of us, we just send up a whole bunch of prayers to God and see which one, well, he might get, he might, I might get three out of, you know, one out of three ain't bad. 
But now listen, I'm not just talking about God as a sugar daddy. I'm talking about praying the prayer of faith in accordance to his will. In accordance to his will. But there's a lot of God's expressed will within the Bible. That's for you. That's for me. You know, one of the ones that we share, we talk about oftentimes, remember, you know, God says, even the, even the captive, the mighty shall be taken away. God says, I will contend with him that contends with you, and I will save your... Somebody say it. That's right. Did, did God speak that? Did he say that? And we, 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 uh, we, here we are, we begging God, oh, Lord, please, pretty please, with sugar on top and anything else I can put on top of it, would you please save my wayward kids? Please, Lord, please, Lord, please, Lord, please, Lord. As if we got to beg God. You know, if, if we could, we'd get up there and we'd twist his arm. We'd twist his arm. Lord, please, you know. And God just says, why are you begging me to do what I've already sent my son to do? God loved the world so much that he... That whosoever shall not but have, he, for how, who's, who's, who's the world? Does that include all of us? You know, so he sent his son. Jesus even said it himself, didn't he? The son of man did not come to condemn the world, but to do what? Is your children part of that? So why are we begging God and almost, almost, you know, just want to threaten him? God, please, please, and making old covenant promises to him. Lord, if you just save my children, if you save them, Lord, I'll, 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 I'll promise I'll what? You will what? All of our promises are like ropes of what? How many times have you promised God and not came through? I, I, I don't even want to begin to, you know, see, I, I thought that's the way it went. Lord, I, I'll make a promise. I'll, if you do this, I'll do that. The Lord said, you know, haven't you read without me, you can do what? Nothing. What do you have to bring to the table other than your need? That's all you have. That's all you need is a need. The Bible constantly said Jesus saw him. He had what? He had compassion, Tom. He had compassion. He came to show us exactly what his father is like. When you get to heaven, it's not going to matter who you meet first, whether it be God the Father, God the Holy Spirit, or God the Son. They're all the same in character. Do you really understand what he's saying? See, this is the question that he asks. This is the question. When the Son of Man comes, when he comes, will he find faith? See, because that's what the devil is going after. He's going after our faith. This side of heaven is one of the most precious things we have, our faith. That's what we have. And the devil says, listen, uh, you know, Stephanie... I know that God has given you this measure of faith, you know, and I know that you, you're growing in that, and, and i got to do something, i got to do something, you know. I'm going I'm gonna, I'm gonna to shake your house up a little bit, Job. I'm going to shake you up, girl. Because, see, I want you to, to somehow get, get, fall down under the pressures. I want you to turn your back on Jesus. I want you to say, you know, what, what purpose is there in serving God? What are, you, what are we really getting from serving God? You know, you know my, my house still hasn't been fixed. My car is still not running right. My kids are still driving me nuts. I'm going down to the police station to get them every week. What good is it in serving God? The devil's going after your faith. He is going to hit you where it hurts. He knows you, and he knows how to hurt you. And he knows how to hurt God, too, by the way. You know how the devil hurts God? By hurting his children. See, he know he can't, he, can't, he can't do anything to God. He already took that whooping and got, 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 gave him his marching orders, you know, put on, put on to, the, to the curb. So, so what he does now is, you know, I can't hurt God except that I hurt you. See, the church, the apple of God's eye. I'm going to go after you because, see, I can transfer the pain that I bring upon you to your God. He says, cast your cares upon me because I care for you. God cares about you. So anything that touches you, he says what? Touches him. That's another thing that has to be taken by what? By faith. Because the truth be told, a lot of us are thinking, you know, I don't really think God even cares nothing about me. You know that, Brother Steve? Saints have been, have, been, have been tricked into believing, I don't think God really cares anything about me. Well, I can see he cares about, you know, her, and I can see he cares about him. I mean, look at the cars they're driving. Look at the house they're living in. Look at, look at the money that they're making. I mean, you know, it almost sounds like David. You know, I, I, my feet almost slipped until I went into the sanctuary. You know, I was envious of the, of the wicked. I was even envious of some of the saints in the church. I was envious. 
God really just doesn't care about me. I'm convinced the devil is a liar. You better ask somebody. He's a liar. This is the faith that we need to possess. We need to possess that faith. You know, could, wouldn't that be so wonderful, Sister Rhea, that when you spoke to your father in heaven, you know, and he said, listen, Sister Rhea, what is it you say? Okay, hold it right there. I'm on my way. And you say, no, 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 Father, that's all right. You don't have to come. You don't have to leave. Just speak the word. Just speak the word. That's the faith. That's the faith that we need to possess in order to get through the other side. God, help us if we don't. God, help us if we don't. When the Son of Man comes, will he find faith, not just on the earth, in me, in you? See? Truth be told, some of us are feeling physical things, and you know, we wonder why, Lord, don't you, you got all that power, why don't you just take care of this for me? And we're almost at the place where we're you know, about ready just to give up on God. What profit is it? Oh, we of what? Little faith. Huh? God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He spoke this thing into existence. As soon as he said, let there be light, done deal. As soon as God says, I will. You know, when they, the leper came to him and he said, he said, Lord, if you will, oh, Lord, if you will, thou can make me clean. What did he say? He said, I will. And then what happened after that? Two days later? Two weeks later? Who said it? It was done. Immediately. He's the same God. He's the same God. And he loves you the same way he loves who? Jesus. God only knows how to love one way. You know that, right? Completely. Unconditionally. Unconditionally. And I don't want to be irreverent, but let me just put it this way. God is wild about you. I started to say crazy about you, but I don't think somebody would probably take that the wrong way. And then, you know, you bring out them rocks from underneath your tunic, and I'd be stoned up here at the pulp, and then they'd get on YouTube and just wouldn't be good. God loves you so much. He loves you so much. Huh? He is wild about you. If you don't believe me, just take a little walk to Calvary. Just take a little stroll. It's always good to take a walk with God like Abraham did. He loves you so, so much. And he's proven it. He's pr did, I, did I say that? <laughs> he's proved it. He's proved it. This is the faith that we need to have. This is the faith that will get you through. This is the faith that will cause your prayer life to do what? Increase. When you begin to pray the prayer of faith, expecting God's word to do exactly what God's word says. You know, we expect doctors, we get a pain here, we get a pain there, we run to the doctor, and we say, doctor, doctor. They had a song about that, right? Give me the news. <laughs> doctor, doctor. Then they, someone needs to put the lime in the coconut and drink it all up. What kind of foolishness is that? You go to the real doctor. Go to the master physician. Huh? When he speaks, he's better than E.F. Hutton. Tom, when he speaks, whatever he says, done. In accordance to his will. I'm done. Because y'all are looking at me funny, you know. I'm just foolish enough to believe this. Every single word of it. Every single word of it. I've got testimony. God has priors. He has priors. Some of us are still floating, or floating along in our spiritual journey on something God did for you uh, 50 years ago. 50, 25 years ago. You know, and there's another song, What Have You Done For Me Lately? Huh? He's the same God. Same God. All we need to do is trust him because that's what this whole thing started all over. Didn't trust God. Didn't believe God. I want to leave you with one thing. Jeremiah, chapter 17, verse 5. Some of you know what it is, right? Cursed is the man. Huh? You know. I can see you smiling. You know. We put our trust in men. We become nothing more than a reflection of our, our favorite author, or our favorite professor, or our favorite whatever. All we do is reflect their, their ideals and their images and all this and that. This is the image you want to reflect. This one. God. Cursed is the man that trusts in man. You, we've departed from the living God, the scripture says. Just believe God's word. That seems to be the hardest thing we do. There will be one sin that cannot be forgiven, in my opinion. That's the sin of unbelief. Our prayer ought to be, Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. Help thou 
Help thou my unbelief. May God bless you. Father God, please help us to grow in the faith of Jesus. Lord, please increase our faith that we can answer that question affirmatively. When you come, you will find faith upon the earth because it will be the faith of Jesus that you have given to us. Thank you so much, Lord. Help us to walk in faith, to believe your word. In Jesus' name, amen.